Happy Thursday. Is that a thing? I don't know if it's a thing or not. How you doing? Good midday. I was very cozy in bed, so I decided to stay there for a little while longer than normal. Uh, I was also surrounded by cats, so um, it's like you can't get up when they're on top of the covers anyway. Why would you? I mean, it's, it's cat law. We're running a little bit behind today, but I think that's all right. I think everybody will be okay with that. I'm gonna open up the Peruvian today. Definitely one of my favorite coffees that we got from the Island Roasters. Regretting not going back and getting the Tamor. That's the walnut smooth coffee. This is the almond and cocoa notes. I think they changed the note profile on the bag too, and I completely missed it. I should, I should have picked it up. Yeah, they, there wasn't so much walnut on there anymore. I don't know what they had replaced it with, but I think that's why I was looking at the bags and I was looking for the walnut tasting note and it wasn't present. So I immediately glanced over uh, the name and I should have just been looking at the name. Did not do that. That is my fault. I mean, it's not like I was blaming anyone anyway. <clears throat> so, Get our bag open here. It is a cloudy day. It's gonna be cloudy. Had some more rain last night. Not nearly as bad, but it's definitely a lot of rain. Mm. <sighs> if you love a good coffee smell, I think this is the coffee for you. It's just such a pleasant, you get a little bit of the cocoa just, just, it's just a smidge. It's just like a, like a hair, a nose hair worth of cocoa that you're like, just, just gets in your nose. Cause it's all coffee. It's all coffee all the time. It's just, it's just things that you're kind of just picking out as you're going along. I replaced the batteries in this thing. I didn't know if it was necessary or not, but I did it because I was tired of what I felt was off measurements. Probably wasn't. I don't care. I changed the batteries. So, <laughs> all right. Whoop, no, trying to get away. Um, yeah, let's do about 21. These beans, beans are very nice. And I just remember that I wanna do something too. If I can hold on to that memory for the length of time it takes me to close this bag. No, I'm gonna go the other way, don't I? I think so. Nope, I, wanted, I was correct the first time. Doddering old man doesn't know how to close coffee bag, film at 11. Definitely water. One of these, one of these has vegetable oil in it. The other one has water. I chose... All right. So we're gonna give these I do need one of those little gravy boats. <laughs> Maybe I can find one of those. I went on um, Amazon trying to find those little white, I know you probably don't know what I'm talking about. There are a lot of, on Instagram, there are a lot of coffee baristas that do this stuff at home for Instagram and they have what, they, what is like a gravy boat that's about this size um, and it's made for just this amount of coffee it seems like and then you would put it in there and then you would take your spritzer and you would give it a small spritz and then you would shake it to distribute the water. The problem with this is though, as you can kind of see, um, rather than it being in a small little dish, it's up the sides of this giant catcher here. So you're gonna see some beans stick. And I guess that's what's nice about the porcelain. Maybe they stick less. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to keep it a medium fine grind. I think today we'll see how that goes. I think I had good luck with this Peruvian with that. It'll, it'll be nice to taste it fresh. The last time I had it, it was maybe seven, eight months old when I uh, finished the bag. So having it a nice, fresh tasting coffee in this Peruvian is probably going to be Amazing. So what the water does 
is that it, look at that, there's like no static in there at all. And that's what the water is meant to do. The water is meant to keep the static down. And I think maybe help a little bit with retention because a lot of that retention comes from static. But then you introduce more retention because the water will <laughs> make it a little stickier as you'll kind of see here. See, you got all of this residual coffee up and in here. You're not losing a lot. Um, just enough to make you go, oh, great. So, so one of those little pretentious, fun uh, gravy boats would <laughs> be kind of cool, I think. <laughs> All right. Waiting for the water to heat up. A little bit of time left. I'll turn that down just a hair. A uh, funny thing, and this is just a random weird story. I don't know if you've ever seen these before. Um, I know you've seen premium crackers before. They're all over the place. They're from the Bisco. Uh, but I don't know if uh, many people have seen the minis. Um, they come in a bag like this, and they look like this. The little mini uh, saltine crackers. Um, they're great for chili. And they're great to eat like this. They're incredibly buttery, for whatever reason. I'm sure they're the exact same as regular premium saltine crackers. For some reason, they just have this buttery flavor that's really nice and goes great with chili. These things are incredibly hard to get a hold of, at least up here, at least at our Meyer. And it's really funny. It's a really funny thing because sometimes they'll be on sale and they'll be all gone. Sometimes they won't be on sale and they'll be all gone. You'll get to the aisle where the crackers are and they have their own little niche place where they can like be stacked like 10 back and it's only one and it's only like here. And then it's just like, you know, they go straight back. And that box, if you're not there when the premium minis shipment arrives, they're all gone. I don't know if it's just a bunch of people <laughs> buying it. I don't know if it's like us and just one person is getting a bunch of them because when we buy our premiums, if we're out, we buy them in four boxes at least um, because you never know when you're going to want a bowl of chili or they go great with potato soup. Um, but it's just so funny because I've never seen a product at least there's no product that's on my radar where I've seen the shelf go bare for months. I think, and this was during the pandemic, so it may have been a little bit of a different circumstance. We've got like four boxes of these, and then it took Meyer three months to get another set of boxes of these, and then those were gone almost immediately, except for like two boxes. Again, it took another three months, four months for them to get more in. It was, it was just super crazy. I've never seen a product um, so niche in such high demand. It's fascinating. Um, they taste amazing. If you see these little things, get a box of them. Um, take, get them home if you like crackers. They're, it's, got, it's just got a weird buttery taste to them that uh, regular premiums just don't have. It's fascinating. 60 grams, give ourselves a little bit. I put in 21 grams, so 200 grams of water to seven grams of coffee. I'm gonna try to do Math. Math is really hard. Is it 200 grams of water per seven grams of coffee? I thought that's what I normally did. Or maybe it's 100 grams of water per seven grams of coffee. <sighs> My brain is broken. Look, it's a brownie. We've made a brownie, everybody. So we're going to put, I don't know, I'm going to put about 400 grams of water in here. Just because. And then I'll relook up my measurements. I, I've, I could have sworn it was seven grams of coffee to uh, 200 grams of water. Looking at that now, it seems more like a seven grams of coffee to 100 grams or 100 milliliters of water seems more appropriate. And because my brain does what it does, I'm second guessing everything now. So we'll do this as is. I'm sure it'll taste amazing. It always has. Seven grams of coffee. I know so the seven grams is right. Uh, I want to say the 200 is right. But the problem with that is if I do 21 grams of coffee, that's three. So that's like 600 grams of water. 
600 milliliters of water. If I do 21 grams of coffee, which doesn't seem right. So it would seem more like seven grams of coffee to 100 milliliters of water, which would be 300 grams of water to 21 grams of coffee. That sounds more correct than what I've just said out of my mouth hole. I've lost it. I've completely lost the thread. Um, it's just that it's not a bad day. It's just that my brain's a little foggy. Like I said, I, I slept a little bit longer this morning, still kind of waking up. I don't know why. I just felt cozy in the bed. And like I said, I had two cats on either side of me. Look at that down there. What are you even doing? What are you even doing? Damn thing. So I just closed my eyes and then I woke up and it was 11 o'clock. So, mm. oh well, it's all right. Sometimes you just gotta sleep in a little bit. A little self-help never hurt. I know I had an entire vacation, but sometimes you, you just do a lot on vacation and then, hmm. You know, I took a little bit longer because I was thinking of ratios. So probably took another additional what? 20 seconds, so. Four minutes is pretty good. We got a we got a nice little drip going on now. Bed's not great. It must be seven grams of coffee to 100 milliliters of water. I don't know where I got 200 from. That just doesn't make any sense to me. It must be 100. Let me, hang on. Yeah, seven grams of coffee, 100 is 100 milliliters of water. For every 100 milliliters of water using your brewing device, add seven grams of ground coffee. So for some reason, I thought that that was, 200, so I've completely, I don't know where the 200 came from. This is for a pour over, so seven grams per 100 milliliters. So seven grams of coffee, 100 milliliters of water, 21 grams of coffee, 300 milliliters of water. It's, it makes sense that, that, well, it makes sense in the grand scheme of a recipe. It doesn't make sense, you know, if you're playing football. So. 100, so I was completely off with my ratios. I shouldn't change it too awful much. Well, I mean, I only put 400 in. So, we should be okay. Smells okay. We should be all right. And like I said, I'm very excited to taste this fresh. Yeah, so 21 grams of coffee would have meant 300 milliliters of water, because three times Seven is 21. That's, that's how I do it. <sighs> I didn't have anything to talk about this morning and then I saw the minis in the pantry and I'm like, oh my gosh, has anyone else experienced this mini mystery? It just... Mm. It's... Mm. Oh, it's not spiritual. I was about to say it's a spiritual awakening. It's not. It's, it's, I mean, it's just delicious coffee that makes you feel really nice. It's got a great mouthfeel. It's got a wonderful finish to it. Um, you really get a nice taste of almond in it. I'll bet if I did the ratio correctly, you would get even more. And then you get this really nice, bitter, almost cocoa-y taste in the middle of your tongue uh, after after you swallow. And it is just, it's just a wonderfully balanced, flavorful cup of coffee. Uh, it just, and it's dark. It's a nice dark color. It's a medium roast, but it's a nice dark color. Uh, the Chemex, I mean, the whole pass through thing, it's just absolutely fantastic. And it makes just a great cup of coffee. And it's just amazing how this will be dark, but if it's sitting here in the clever, and I hit the and I hit the button. Sometimes it won't be nearly as dark as it when it passes through the Chemex, and it's just fascinating because it just sits in here. It'll sit in here for four minutes, and then you'll have like a drawdown of like uh, two or three minutes. And you know that's not just sitting in the coffee at that point. It's been sitting in the coffee, and now it's passing back through the grounds that it just extracted from. So you're getting just a little bit more, I would think. And um, the darkness in this roast is just so it's pretty. It's really pretty. Mm. And it tastes so good. But yeah, these minis mystery. I did. It, it's a fascinating cracker. 
Um, it's a delicious cracker. It does not taste anything like the other premium large meat or regular size saltines that you get. It just doesn't. It's got a wonderful buttery taste to it and it goes so well with chili. And then they're already small. They're already this small. So you just get one in your spoonful of chili and you don't have to break them up with your hands, which can be fun. I don't disagree, but you know, you get these and then it's just pour, eat them up, pour a little bit more, eat them up, you know, and I've got, I, I bought another box yesterday and I think there were two boxes left on the shelf, which means when we go back, those boxes will be gone and it'll probably be another week and a half to two weeks before they restock these. And I, I don't know if it's just the same kind of like six people that come and grab up two boxes each. <laughs> And, you know, I don't know. It would be fascinating to find out. Put up a little camera and see who buys the, the premium minis. Because, I mean, they're, they're up on the very tall shelf. They're beside the regular premium cracker, saltine crackers. But they're up on a tall shelf. And I think this, this is one of those kind of things that if you know, you know. And if you know, you discovered it magically one day just like we did it's just like we 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 were like well i wonder what these what these would taste like in chili you know or they're you don't have to break it up so they'll be better in the chili and then they're just buttery deliciousness and i don't know how they do it it's just fascinating uh try to find it at your local meyer maybe they'll be at a um giant eagle if you have one of those close kroger's probably has them but you, you may be finding the same thing we did whereas you know you'll walk in there'll be a total row of them. Uh, you'll pick up two and then maybe the next day you forgot something and you'll go back and the entire row's gone. And then it's gone for like two weeks. <laughs> it's absolutely fascinating and fun. And those are very delicious. Just, they're very delicious on their own. Um, or like I said, in chili or potato soup. Potato soup's really good. And then even in chicken noodle soup. Mm. And they, they, they're not in the bowl long enough for them to soak through. So, I mean, I don't let them soak through because I'm, I'm, I'm pouring, eating, pouring, eating, you know, that kind of a thing. Mm. Peruvian, delicious. Once again, out of the park, Island Roasters Coffee Company. I was so glad I was able to come back and stop by. And like I said, I wish I'd have been able to catch them with their roaster going, uh, but it was near the end of the day and uh, they had buttoned up all those hatches by the time I got in there. It was so cool though to walk back in there and see all the coffee again, uh, you know, and then they've got, the, they've got big bags of coffee sitting there next to the roaster. So it's very aesthetically pleasing that, uh, that shop that they've got there. And the coffee's delicious. I got a, a mocha there. And then Matt got a chai. Now the chai was the, the Tazo chai in a box, which is fine. But the coffee I got, I got a mocha and it was just, oh, just so delicious. So great. Anywho, thank you so much for watching this morning. Y'all are great. I appreciate every single one of you. And we will see you next week on Tuesday. I'm going to take that Kona and I'm going to put it through the maca pot, the rainbow I have. And we're going to see what that's like, because I've never run a dark roast through that maca pot. And I've certainly not run Kona coffee through it. So it'll be very interesting to see if it keeps its smoothness. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Tuesday. Bye.